guys. It is actually a pleasant, almost warm night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in uh, New York, baby. It is a Sunday evening. I think it's October 23rd, 2022. So Sunday is the time for my doomsday sermon where I just go through all of the various chronicles. Yes, the chronicles of the collapse to come up with the most doom and gloom. And, and guys, uh, I would like to ignore the entire subject of Haiti. I would never like to think of Haiti again as long as I live. Uh, but I do have a channel called Collapse Chronicles after all. And how can you chronicle the collapse of global industrial civilization, planet, society, talk about Mad Max and, uh, and all the rest of it and just pretend like we don't have the poster child of what collapse looks like right here uh, off the coast of the good old United States. You do not have to go, good Lord, to Lagos, Nigeria or uh, where else, Jakarta, Indonesia, somewhere in Bangladesh to find it. You, you go just a few miles uh, <coughs> off the coast of Florida to find the poster child of it. So I'm going to try to make this, well, obviously I will be revisiting, but what I like about this uh, sermon is it's written by a fellow, it's written by an author, uh, you might recognize the name Mitch, how do you pronounce it? A-L-B-O-M, Mitch Album. Uh, I think he's best known for writing Tuesdays with Maury. Anyway, he's an author based out of uh, Detroit. <laughs> now, uh, we, we could probably make the uh, the same uh, almost uh, the, the same sermon that Mitch could write about his hometown of Detroit or Baltimore or Flint, Michigan or Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, but anyway, uh, Mitch has the questionable honor on his resume. I guess he works at, uh, he, he's involved with this orphanage down there in Haiti, a Haitian orphanage. Good Lord, he spends four days a month down there, you know, actually he travels to Haiti and um, works at an orphanage in Haiti. I don't know why this man is such a glutton for punishment, but it's nice to have a first-hand report of what it looks like in Haiti. I don't know how much longer. I, I, I'm surprised that there's still flights in and out of that uh, cesspool down there. I, I can't believe that you can still get a plane into that uh, into that pit. Maybe he flies into the Dominican Republic and takes his life in his own hands and goes over next door. Um, Anyway, so we're going to hear from Mitch today uh, for today's Doomsday Sermon called The Horrors of Haiti Today Are Sadly Very Believable. Is anybody wanting a snapshot of what? Uh, you know, this planet is heading into over the, you know, over the next few, hell, I, would, I used to say decades, but I don't know anymore. And I used to say Lagos, Nigeria, but uh, I, I think half of Haiti would love to be in Lagos, Nigeria tonight. Uh, so anyway, he's, uh, Mitch 
is looking at this word, which I have to admit, I, I am trying to train myself not to use so much the word unbelievable, uneffing believable, which I use way too much, but uh, good Lord, every time you open the damn mainstream media, it's just like, this is unbelievable. Anyway, take it away, Mitch Album, and give us a first-hand report from what is going on uh, in Haiti, and this is from his hometown paper, the Detroit Free Press, Dateline, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. It's unbelievable. We say that all the time. These gas prices, they're unbelievable. This inflation, it is unbelievable. The divisiveness between political factions, it's unbelievable. Believable. The word itself suggests the situation has reached its furthest degree of insanity. It can't get any worse. But things can always get worse. Consider what's going on here in Haiti. Hmm. Here in Haiti, where they don't use the word unbelievable because every new day brings a previously unimagined degree of suffering. The government has cratered. Some 200 gangs have seized control. The nation has come to a near standstill. There is no fuel. Food and water are hard to come by. Schools are closed. Businesses shuttered. An estimated million people are starving in the middle of Haiti's biggest city. <clears throat> As an American who comes here every month to operate an orphanage, I find myself at a loss for the word that would truly describe the current situation. And he is an author after all. We have had to close our schools because teachers can't get there. We have to buy water in plastic bottles if we can find them just to let our kids drink. We are in the heat and the dark much of the time because we cannot operate generators without fuel. And of course, uh, the reason they need to operate generators is because the power grid has pretty much shut down uh, in Haiti for all intents and purposes. Uh, we have a child with tuberculosis who has been bounced from place to place because the hospitals here cannot function. What adjective really suffices? Unbelievable just does not cut it. Lawlessness and despair reign supreme. If it was unbelievable, that a nation just 700 miles off the Florida coast was already the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, then what do you say when its meager economy comes to a halt? Then he has links to all of these, but every one of these statements, he links you to uh, anybody wanting anybody wanting to look like what's uh, heading to a city near you. I uh, can go on any of these links and just get deeper and deeper into this cesspool. If it was unbelievable that fuel had to be subsidized by the government just for citizens to be able to afford it, then what do you say when gangs overtake the fuel terminals and nobody gets any fuel 
at all. If it was unbelievable that during shortages you sometimes had to pay $10 a gallon for gas on the black market, what do you say when they now want $50 a gallon, meaning, you know, the gangs that have taken over the fuel terminals, uh, 50 bucks a gallon. Uh, you can buy a gallon of gas. If it was unbelievable that the gangs in Haiti became more powerful than the government, what do you say when the government uses those very gangs to rough up their dissenters, which happens all the time? You know, of course, that part is getting no, uh, no uh, mention in the mainstream media how the government of Haiti is, is hiring gang members to quash dissent of the government. <laughs> I, I mean, this is some sick shit, people, uh, what's unfolding down there. No wonder there's boatloads of Haitians washing up in Texas and Florida and everywhere else. If it was unbelievable that you could not go out at night for fear of violence or kidnapping, then what do you say when you can't go out during the day? If it was unbelievable that hospital care in Haiti was limited, remote, and out of reach for most citizens, what do you say when the hospitals must close down because their staff can't get there and now cholera is spreading? Yep, yep, yep. If it was unbelievable that there is barely a paved road outside of the city of Port-au-Prince, then what do you say when those paved roads are blockaded by downed telephone lines, chopped trees, I didn't know there were any trees in Haiti big enough to fell across a road, chopped trees or old cars choking off any traffic and subjecting the rare brave driver to potential attacks. If it was unbelievable that gang members randomly shot their enemies in the street, then what do you say when those same gang members rape young girls atop the corpses of their dead relatives, which is being reported now throughout Haiti. What do you say when gang members rape young girls atop the corpses of their dead relatives? Well, I can think of a few things to say, but uh, I, is Collapse Chronicle still a family channel? One more. If it was unbelievable that the Haitian president, and I have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name, Hovenel Moise, was assassinated in the middle of the night in his own home, then what do you say when that murder has still not been solved more than a year later and a chief suspect is the current prime minister? Now, a lot of people I know would say it is the American empire at work. Uh, I don't know who killed the guy, and, and, and I really don't care, okay? I am a chronicler of the collapse. Uh, you can sit here and play the blame game. It's the Clinton Foundation's fault as much as it's Bill and Hillary Clinton's fault that Haiti is in the shape it's in. It's their fault. Bill and Hillary, it's, it's your fault. 
Uh, it's the evil American empire's fault. Uh, we all know whose fault it is. <clears throat> That's why we don't need to play the blame game. Anyone with, the, with a brain uh, knows whose fault it is. So, can Haiti even be saved? You see where this is going. The combination of dysfunction, violence, poverty, starvation, disease, corruption, and don't forget, finger pointing, have driven Haiti to the brink of absurdity. You keep thinking something has to change. How long can a nation go on this way? Of course, he never mentions environmental destruction, uh, overshoot, overpopulation. None of that is mentioned anywhere in his combination of things. Uh, you know, the word breeding is never mentioned. The combination of breeding, dysfunction, violence, poverty, starvation. Let's see. Anyway, I think we get it. A Haitian child who was never born cannot be raped, cannot starve to death, cannot even become an orphan. A child who was never born will never end up in an orphanage. And I would like to see, and we're going to take a break, population of Haiti in 2010, uh, you know, after that big earthquake. Uh, okay, there were right at 10 million people in 2010. So they remember that big earthquake that killed 100,000 people and made a million people homeless. Let's look at the... Uh, so what is it now? It was 10 million. I'm actually kind of surprised that it's only 11.7 million. I'm somewhat surprised that only 1.7 million children uh, have been born in the last 12 years in Haiti. Uh, 1.7 million pe people born in Haiti. Uh, anyway, where were we? Let's get back to Mitch. I just had to take a little detour from the sermon for my own sermon. Okay. How long can a nation go on this way? The truth is a long time. Maybe forever, oh yes, if nobody does anything about it. As Haiti has descended into hell, its closest, its closest big neighbors have not moved, perhaps because they have seen the futility of previous efforts. Hmm. The Biden administration until this month has had a mostly hands-off approach to Haiti so it sounds like uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump uh, in complete solidarity over Haiti until this month, I guess. Finally, last week, several nations, including the U.S., suggested a, quote, multinational rapid action force, yes, to go into Haiti to at least free the fuel. There you go. What, what, what is the first job to do is free up the fossil fuels. Get those fossil fuels flowing. The number one order of business by the multinational rapid action force going into that sewer, that open sewer, uh, is to get the fossil fuels back flowing. 
to at least free the fuel and essential supplies from the grip of the gangs, the UN took up the matter, but the initiative stalled when some nations, including Russia and China, balked at interfering in another country. The irony of that stance for Russia and China would be rich if it were not so tragic. So, meanwhile, the UN suggested sanctions of certain influential Haitians. Can you say uh, these gang leaders? <laughs> He's not even going, he, he won't even mention this dude's name. Certain influential Haitians, if that, as if that is going to solve anything quickly, while it, meaning the UN, searches to drum up support for a more severe intervention. And uh, I do, you know, I'm just going to show this one picture. Here, this is a picture that uh, Mitch took of a bread vendor pushing his cart past a burning barricade. This is how you you sell bread in Haiti. If you want to go uh, buy a loaf of bread, you flag down the dude in the uh, wheelbarrow going through the burning barricade. You can get you a nice fresh loaf of Haitian bread. Oh uh, yeah. And while many Haitians cringe at the idea of yet another outside force coming in to oversee Haiti, others say, what choice is there? Well, there is the choice of not having another outside force coming in to oversee Haiti. There, there you go. If one choice is yet another outside force coming in to oversee this shithole, others say, what choice is there? And any man like, out of 128 comments, I read every comment on this story, I'm saying about 127 of them went with the choice, stay the hell out of Haiti. Okay, so what choice is there? If there is no food, no water, no fuel, no school, no business, no transportation, no safety, what would you do if women and children are being killed and burned, decent men are being terrorized, charities and orphanages are being attacked, and fresh-faced teenagers are being recruit recruited to carry big guns, what do you call that? I call that the collapse of a uh, of a failed state. Is is a failed state? It is what I called it. It, it is a simmering shithole cesspool that just needs to die under its own weight. It is uh, it, it is an island nation that has gone completely beyond its overshoot, beyond its carrying capacity. It, it is it, it is an open and shut case of a uh, uh, of overshoot in action where Mother Nature needs to uh, just uh, take care of the situation down there. Uh, sending in troops, spending a bunch of taxpayers' money, uh, there, there you go. It, all it's going to do is just continue the problem as another 1.7 million children will be born in Haiti over uh, the, the next 10 years. 
probably a hell of a lot of them, uh, uh, you know, being born to rape victims who were raped by gang members. You know, cholera is the best thing for this, for this damn place. Send in the cholera. <clears throat> All right, what do you call that? Back home, we shake our heads and say it's unbelievable. But here in Haiti, there are no words. And again, I, I read all 128 comments. Uh, I'm now up to 134 comments. The vast majority sounding a little bit like this dude Humpty Dumpty. So what does Humpty Dumpty have to say about this article on Haiti? <clears throat> you know, they ask you, what do you think? Yahoo News asks, what do you think? This is what Humpty Dumpty says he thinks. If I or anyone else said what we think, our comments would be ripped down by the Yahoo community. We all know what we all think. Let it burn to the ground. Goodbye and good riddance. And that was actually a fairly tame comment. You know, reading these comments, I, I, I'm wondering what the hell. The, the, I, I would like to see the comments that the Yahoo community did pull down. Uh, you know, it's just... Uh, anyway, I'm just here chronicling the collapse of a planet. And uh, amen to Brother Mitch Album. And... Um, where that dude gets the stomach to keep going back down there, I have no clue. If you really want to see the most heartbreaking YouTube video you might have ever seen, go on the link, you know, when it talks, there's a link to his orphanage, and you go over there to his website down in that orphanage, and you uh, look at that YouTube video, which was, I guess, came out before all of this latest stuff shit hit the fan but anyway <clears throat> I'm gonna wrap it up here because uh, my little Haitian uh, says he needs his tummy rubbed he goes yes pop life is not bad and life is not collapsed had bugs in a jar farm and I'm gonna hang out here in this warm soft bed well, you're ranting about all those Haitians. So what do you think, Sancho Panza? Are you, uh, what is your opinion? What is your opinion on, uh, can Haiti be saved? Sancho Panza, can Haiti be saved? I think Sancho Panza's, uh, Opinion on the matter. Can Haiti be saved? Reflects the other 133 comments on this story. Get out there and save Haiti while you still can. My guys.